Welcome to the Harnessing Happiness podcast. This is the Happy Clappy Soundbite. Hello, it's Sarah Jane Ayler here at Harnessing Happiness. Well, you know that because you've just tuned in and thank you very much for doing so. It's uh, it's great to have you here with me. And you know what? It would be great to actually do something really live if you could all integrate in the future. I don't know. Let's see what the future brings. Anyway, changing behaviour. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. And this is really sort of on the back of the last happy clappy soundbite that I recorded about me doing things differently in 2022. Because here's the thing, we aren't our behaviour. We can change at any point in our life if we choose to do so. Now, I'm not saying that change is necessarily easy, but when we do embrace change and we do take a different path, when we do do things differently, we will naturally get different results. So if you are consistently getting the same results and getting frustrated with getting the same results, what can you do differently to generate a different result? Whether that's in your life or whether that's in how somebody reacts to you and responds to you or how... Just anything, you can really adapt that sort of change of behaviour in any way to generate different results. I mean, if I go back many, many, many years, uh, when I first trained and qualified um, to become a coach, um, I've got a level five qualification in performance coaching, I changed my behaviour around my son, who I can't remember how old he was at the time, I think, I don't know, 10 11 12 somewhere around that and he's my son's got loads of energy and he's really sort of if you've listened to another of my episodes you, <laughs> you'll have heard his behavior at school was never the easiest <laughs> but anyway he's he was always lively always leaping about always wanting attention um and it just i was busy and i'm trying to you know be a single parent and just lots of different things and it just we just used to clash against each other all of the time and once I learned that how I responded to him could change his behavior it made a massive difference so I changed the words that I used to describe him at the time which was sort of like you know um, draining and um, drama queen I can't remember the exact words but very sort of negative in connotation to ones where he was energetic full of life and it it really shifted the energy around him and also I didn't respond to his poor behavior I only responded to his good behavior so without him realizing he then started to shift his behavior so he'd get results he'd get responses from me if he behaved well rather than uh, misbehaved <laughs> which to my eyes he had been doing I'm trying to do things and he's leaping about and going Rah. anyway that's many 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 years ago now and he's now 23 and he's moved out and he's got a life of his own and he's doing a brilliantly with the, his work and he's self-employed himself uh, he's got a skate clothing brand and he's um, a plasterer and he works for my ex-husband his father building garden rooms you know and he's he's got a really good life going which is fabulous and I'm really proud of him but if I bring that round to the current day in terms of change in behavior last year during 2021 had a really manic year I was trying to do so many different things embarking on um, training courses accelerator programs um, that were taking up huge amounts of my time Um, it meant that I didn't connect into sort of meditation and yoga as much as I wanted to do it impacted on me getting out on bike rides and running and doing all sorts of things but it was stuff that I wanted to learn but I was just absorbed and it became like a cyclone of just being crazy on top of everything else back in November of 2021 I I just took a step back and go the right enough enough is enough (laughs) I don't need to do any more of this I need to stop so I recognized where I was at and made a conscious effort to step back and integrate what I'd learned and during December I decided to get more organized and having come out of December I might say it was my son's birthday on the 4th of January which is always my break point (laughs) It means I can start the year ahead um, in a different mindset because I've got everything done. Yay! So it was then I thought, right, strategy is the year a- is for the year ahead. But I needed to change my behaviour around that. I needed to get more organised, which is not where my comfort zone is. 
<laughs> I'm not the best at um, really sort of planning, but I know it's something that I've got to do and I need to put that into place. And that is what I'm working on putting into place. And I'm not going to be taking on any more courses. Um, I, I know my stuff. I know what I need to do. And it's just a case now of um, finishing all the things that I've put into place already and um, continuing with them and finishing projects because you know, I love to create, I love to do stuff, but sometimes you do need to go, right, no, stop. And that is what I'm doing. So I have got um, books that I'm going to finish writing and courses that I'm going to get out there and I'm going to really consolidate my efforts on getting everything done. So I am changing my approach. And it's interesting because I started with this a few weeks ago so obviously not in 2022 but I had that change of mindset and I've created uh, blocks of time for the week to sort of pan out the week so it's like right I'm going to have the morning doing some recruitment for example the afternoon doing coaching doing podcasting doing so it, it's broken up I've got chunks of time now set out into my calendar where I know what I'm going to be doing. So rather than, as I have always done, going, going with the flow, oh yes, I'll book in a telephone conversation then, I can do this, I can do that. I'm going to be more organised, more structured, uh, more strategic in my approach to make sure I get everything done and finished and that I don't end up in the same crazy world that I was in last year. And that's that's just an element. I mean, I know also that I want to look at my diet and my health and my nutrition. Now, that's not to say I have a poor diet. I don't. However, I want to be more organised and planning meals ahead to make sure that I have sort of healthier, more plant-based meals. I'm not a vegetarian, but I do like a lot of veggies and I would like to move more towards vegetarianism. Uh, I don't, we don't need the amount of meat that we end up having in our diets. Um, we can change. If we make those choices, we make those decisions, we can change our behaviour and get different results. And I think in changing my diet, I will hopefully shed a few pounds. I'm not talking about going on a diet because I don't believe diets work, but it's about my mindset around food and what foods I am preparing and how much I put on my plate because I, I do like my food. <laughs> I love I love the flavours. I love enjoying food. And in fact, I had a much more detailed discussion with this on an earlier podcast episode with um, the wonderful Christine Kenny, who is a, um, a nutritionist and, you know, is about enjoying food. It's embracing it. It's having all those different flavours, but it's, you know, having smaller portion sizes or eating food that isn't quite as sort of heavy in calories, perhaps. But, you know, everything is in a, it's all about balance as well and getting um, a little bit of everything, you know, and enjoying it. So, yes, yeah, so lots of areas to, to change behaviour. So yeah, think about that for yourself. You know, what is it you would like to change? How can you start to bring those changes about? And it just needs to be something small. It only needs to be perhaps that intention that you set in your mind to do something differently and go, right, this is what I am doing. This is what I want to achieve. That, that thought in itself can make that shift change. Because if you make set that intention and you decide that's what you want to aim towards, you know, everything then starts to shift as a result. So, for example, if you decide, like I want to do, is do more yoga, maybe you don't go to the cinema like I did last night instead, but you actually book into your diary that you are going to do yoga um, at a set time with a certain person. You're going to do it and you're going to commit to it. There's all sorts of ways of setting goals. I mean, that again is another um another podcast. That's another happy clappy episode. But all for now I want to say is that you can change your behaviour. You don't have to continue in the same pattern. If you do something differently, you're going to get different results. And if those different results mean a happier you, that is got to be that's got to be good, hasn't it? Anyway, I need to start to change my behaviour because my short happy clappies are getting long. Have a great time day doing whatever it is you're doing today and uh, see how you get on with sort of changing some behavior and getting different results and if you've enjoyed this episode and you've enjoyed my others and you want to 
yeah, please do subscribe or follow uh, because the more I can spread happiness and positive vibes globally and internationally, that, that would be absolutely great. Um, and rate and review because that helps other people know that you've enjoyed it and that it's a podcast that is one to be uh, to be listened to. Thank you for listening. Take care. This is Sarah at Harnessing Happiness <laughs> signing out. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. That was the Happy Clappy Soundbite. Hear full-length episodes of the Harnessing Happiness podcast, released every Tuesday. And for more exclusive content from Sarah, just visit sarahjnaylor.com.